well hit down the line. Nobody's going to get this one. It is a fair ball. It does not bounce into the stands. Randolph will score. Dent has a double. Up the middle, it's a base hit. Bucky Dent rounds third base. Here he comes. It's three to nothing, New York. Steal. There they go. Base hit, right field. Here comes Munson. He'll score. Jackson is heading for third. And it's first and third, a run in, still nobody out. He also got 67 bases on ball, so he works a pitcher. Right field, will it be deep enough? Patek is tagging, Jackson makes the play, here comes Patek, here's the throw! Got it! Probably have again tonight. Bouncy ball, base hit, down the right field line. McRae will be digging hard. Will he try to score? Yes, he will. Jackson having trouble. McRae scores. It'll be a three base hit for Brett. Thank you, Box, watching the 4 2 ball game here. Right now, the Yankees are out in front. We go into the fourth. Billy Martin went up and down that bench, and I thought that was quite a shot as we were watching him as he encouraged Chris Chambliss, who on a squeeze play popped that ball in the air and ended up in a double play. Here is Willie Randolph. He's single and scores in the second inning. Takes his way. Marty Patton in relief of Larry Gura. Outside. One ball, one strike. Billy's been arguing so much he thought lost his voice. But he keeps powering encouragement. This is it. There's his strike. They lose today. He's going to have about seven months to get his voice in shape. One ball, two strikes. Nobody on, nobody out. Top of the board. Low. Two and two. Peachy, he's standing behind Billy. Uh, we can't see him now. Man, been with the Yankees for 51 years. Inside, three and two. Bucky Dent, the on deck batter. Bucky takes a look at Hauser. See what he's supposed to do when he gets up there. Many times the sign will be flashed while you're on the on deck circle. High bounce to the Patek. He'll have to turn it, and he does. Safe. They call him safe. He came off the bag. It just pulled John Mayberry off. Kind of a slow motion play there. Mayberry tried to hang on, so it'll be an error on Patek. Patek, during the regular season, made 29 errors. But Herzog was talking about that before the ball game. He said most of them have been on throw. Sometimes he overthrows. Tries to show that arm off a little bit. This time he, he pulled off. Mayberry off the bag just slightly. That's a pretty good call. Very observant call by the first base umpire, Nick Brannigan. Herzog still arguing. The replay showed he was at least a few inches off the bag. So Bucky Dent is the batter. The Yankees get a break. Let's see how they decide to play it. Patek's a very active shortstop. We've talked in our telecast about Rick Burleson moving on counts, moving according to the pitch. Freddie Patek does a lot of that, too. Breaking balls, he moves it right in the hole for right-hander, moves up the middle. Draws a throw. Punt is in order, and Dent can punt. He's always been one of the best punters in the American League, and he's had seasons where he's led the league in sacrifice punts. He can hit and run, too. Misses it for a strike, tries to punt. i got to be careful. I almost said dunk and bent, rather than dent and punt. One strike. Bucky Dent takes a look at Hauser. They got good speed on at first base in Randolph. Holding, on it, Pat will make a play to first base. Mayberry finally steps on the bag. 
He was in front of it. So the sacrifice is executed perfectly, and down in square position is Willie Randolph. Wasn't that good of a bunt, really, almost back to Marty Patton. He did the job, but you've got to credit Willie Randolph's speed. Look at Patton. He wants to go to second. He thinks he's got to play, but Randolph got such an exceptional jump ball first, he had to take the easy out at first. You were catching now. Rivers is taking a shot at the first pitch both times. What would you do? I'd start him off with a breaking ball, just see if he'd chase it. I wouldn't give him a fastball. You know, they talk about him as being a first ball hitter, obviously, but a better bad ball hitter on a first ball than anybody they know. They throw fastballs up in his eyes and he tomahawks it. Breaking balls in the dirt and he chops it in the dirt, beats it out. Slider there. What do he do? No, says Springstead. Ask the third base umpire. No, says the Jack. Ever see so much activity on a half held back swing? Springstead said no. Porter said ask somebody. They asked New Deck and he says no. Ball one. Outside. Ball two. I tell you, Rivers makes it tough on you. Brent has to move in a couple steps, and he has to keep an eye on Randolph at second base. Poptek is moving. Rivers can handle that bat, do most anything. It's a real cat and mouse game going on. 2-0 pitch. It's popped up. Porter and Mayberry. And Patton runs Porter. Oh, he's laying Mayberry drops it. one of the very few mistakes that the Royals have made in this championship series. They made almost none last night. Took advantage of everything. Right here, you mentioned it earlier, Joel, they don't give you more than three outs. Well, they're going to give you more than three outs right here. And the Rivers, who can really hurt you. Before today's game, Tony, we're a total of four errors in the series, two on each team. This is the second error in this inning that they give them an error. And they should. One thing about baseball, brother, they tabulate your mistakes. Make enough of them, you put a broadcast. Bouncing ball, big hop, pop that tough play. He got him. Taking third is Randolph. Freddie really showed his quickness and the strong throwing arm. Quickness getting a jump, quickness getting rid of the ball, and he had a lot on the throw, and he knew you had to. Because Rivers just almost beat it out. Randolph is on at third. A 4-2 score. Yankees are out in front. We're in the fourth. And Greg Nettles. Misses Marty Patton. He worries right along with her man. Nettles. Smash, base hit, right field. Randolph scores. So it's five to two Yankees. The errors have really hurt the Royals in this inning. And that brings up Thurman Munson, who hit into a force play in the first inning and doubled and scored in the third. Nettles' first RBI in this championship series. They really handcuffed him. That's Herzog's strategy. Handcuff the left-handed hitters with left-handed pitchers. Five to two. Yankees out in front tonight at eight o'clock Eastern time. The Phillies and the Dodgers. Dodgers hoping to close it out. Phillies with their ace, Steve Carlton, to even it up. Play again tomorrow. Tommy John for Los Angeles. Steve Carlton for the Phillies. Munson, bouncy ball, Brett, big hop to Frank White. Forge is on, ends the inning. Yankees pick up a run. We go to the bottom of the fourth. It is New York 5 and Kansas City 2. This is Whitey Herzog. Mary Lou, I believe it is. Isn't it, Tony? I think so. Let's go, let's go. And it'll be Daryl Porter, Amos Otis, and Fred Potek. Porter 
lost the championship series in 1977 is 18 for 40, which is a 450 average. Not many little leaguers hit that much. High fly ball, center field. Jackson's coming over, Rivers taking charge though, and Mickey makes the play. One out. Earlier today, Bob Hope. This is Bob, but next to him, Bob Hope threw out the first ball. And Bob, on Friday, October 28th, from 8 to 10 Eastern Time, it'll be Texaco presents Bob Hope's Road to Hollywood with Bing Crosby and Lucille Ball. Boy, you talk about Hall of Famers. Two hours of great entertainment on October 28th. Texaco presents Bob Hope's Road to Hollywood at 8 to 10 Eastern Time. Boy, I tell you, he is some kind of a guy, that Mr. Hope. I was wondering what he did when there wasn't a war going on. He comes out here and throws out the first ball. He's all over the place, Tony. I don't know where he gets his energy. Runs that great golf tournament, Bob Hope Desert Classic. Appearances all over. Stays young that way. Here he is out of the old ballpark. Five to two here. Yankees lead. Ball one. Amos Otis was out on strikes his first time up. Figueroa in the last inning showed signs of struggling, but then he went to his curveball to Mayberry and got a big strikeout with runners on first and third. He was throwing the fastball earlier by a few of these Royals hitters. High and tight. Two balls and no strikes. Figueroa from Puerto Rico. He's one of these guys who came to the big leagues knowing how to pitch. He's pitched so long in so many ball games in the winter baseball leagues in Puerto Rico. He gained a lot of experience. He's pitched against major league hitters since he was 16 years old down there. He also said he's learned an awful lot just watching Catfish Hunter work on hitters. Boom. Two balls and no strikes. Ball three. Figueroa has only walked one. That was Collins in the third. He has struck out three. Three balls, no strikes. Ball four, walked it. Second walk, give it up. Brings up Hotek, who tripled and scored in the third inning. Well, as Herzig can let Otis go, they're down by three. Hotek can protect you up at the plate. Herzog's a great believer. He's got a man down there, even though they're behind. If he thinks he can steal it, he'll let him fly. Campus holds him close. Outside. Here comes Billy Martin again. You gotta wonder again if Figueroa, we missed it earlier, is having trouble with that full muscle in his side. Ordinarily, he has fairly decent control, Joe. He walks less than three per nine inning game. This year he's had better control than last. Munson has been trying to get him back on the track. After he walked Otis, he went to the curveball with Hotek, who does not have a big strike zone. Many times when a fellow misses with his fastball, you go to his breaking stuff, and somehow that untracks him and gets him back in, in the groove. But he missed with the curveball. Freddie Hotek, count of ball one. Heck, he's leading five to two. Chuck Miller. Hotek has really been swinging a hot bat. Five for ten in this series. In fact, when you talk about playoff games, he has hit nine series games in a row. Five last year, four this year. One ball, one strike, one out. Amos Otis is on at first base. Yankees five and Kansas City two. We're in the middle of the fourth. Otis is back. 
gave a couple pretty good decoy the Otis did on the last pitch as he's fake going towards second base. Do that in the time you pull an infielder out of position, or at least get him leaning where he can sneak a base hit through, especially in artificial service is important. Ah. Two balls and one strike. He's pitching higher now, and he does not appear to have the velocity on his fastball as he did the first couple of innings. He's not throwing as hard. I think that is the first thing you notice. Ball three high. Otis with another good decoy. Taking the steal had Willie Randolph starting over towards second base. Lopez starts to move around for the Yankees in left field. They had Sparky Lyle and Dick Kidro up. He's going to pull all the stops. 3-1 pitch to Pate. Fly ball left field, but it's going to go foul into the stands. Full count, three balls and two strikes. Now, this could be a big pitch here. Pate doesn't strike out very much. Chances are they'll start orders. Yankee bullpen starts to throw. Figueroa continues to pitch high. Last one that Patek fouled off was up and in. He is not the kind of overpowering pitcher consistently to keep the ball up there. He's got to stay down and sink some fastball. Otis getting a good lead at first. One man out. Three-two pitch. There goes Otis. Swung on, it's popped up. Maybe playable. Near the stands. Chambliss reaches Kanka. Just out of reach. So Otis will head back. Now for Mays with three balls and two strikes. Lyle is the left-hander, Titro the right-hander for the Yankees. So far it's been a yo-yo day for those guys in the pen. Up and down, up and down. Otis lead at first. Three balls, two strikes on contact. Holding. Oh. Line drive, left field. Come on, keep on going. Billy Martin having a discussion right now with Marty Springstead, and I believe he is saying to Springstead that something has happened to Figueroa's arm and he wants a lot more warm-up pitches. You see him pointing to the arm and then looking into Herzog in the dugout? That's what he did. I think he's going to ask for more time as Figueroa leaves, and Patek... Tell you, brother, he's had some series, three doubles and a triple for Patek in this series, and he's been the big man today. Third inning as the batter against Dick Titro. Patek on at second base. Five to three is the score. Yankees are out in front. One man out. It's a strike, trying to punt, beat off the base hit. Patek has not yet stolen the base in the championship series, but with the long lead, he's getting down at second base when Pedro goes to the stretch. You see Willie Randolph and Bucky Dent trying to hold him a little bit closer, leaving their positions that time, and that gives that hitter an artificial surface a little advantage. Play a little bit up the middle, trying to watch him there. It's Randolph bluffing. That takes a little of his range away at times. Outside. One ball, one strike. 
talk to the Fox, Morgans, the Maury Wills's about base stealing and say, hey, this is this that you steal a base, you upset that guy's attention. You lose the sight of the main thing, the hitter, pays attention to us, makes a bad pitch, you stir up the infield. Frank is called. Frank White didn't believe the curveball, just seemed to hang inside. Caught that inside corner. That's the kind of usually hang that the right hand batter will rip. One ball, two strikes, one out. what Jackson's number is. We've been looking at it all afternoon. Big 44. Here is Paul Kevin who is over the two. Popping the shortstop and bounced out short to first. It's a strike. Five to four ball game. High and run is at second base. Kind of a ball game you would expect. The one you look for tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern time when the Dodgers go against the Phillies. Inside. One ball and one strike. So this Royals team led the American League in extra base hits this year, and in today's ball game, they've already got four extra base hits, and we're only in the fourth inning. Off the end of the bat, Bucky Dent's only play will be the first base. Frank White, a hit first slide. He didn't hesitate, moving over to third. Brings up Hal McRae, who is two for two. appreciate the effort that's put out by Hal McRae. Last night he had two doubles and scored. Today he's got two singles and has scored once. Five to four. Yankees lead for the bottom of the fourth. Frank White is on a third. They want White to steal home for the one ball. He's watching him, too. Strike. To show you a little respect, even though that Royals are down a little bit, they go pitching from the stretch. White on third base. And one strike delivery. Inside, one and one. He is a very aggressive hitter. He goes out and gets it, doesn't he? He knows how to look. You know, he's a situation hitter, looking for pitches in certain areas, according to the situation. Who's pitching? He's all the way from that plate, but he slides into the ball. Gives you a tough target. One, one pitch. Inside. Two and one. One strike with two outs, five to four. Yankees lead. Royals with two in the third, two here in the fourth. High runs at third. Frank White. McRae again trying to take charge. We look at White, the third. Pitro. Two one pitch. Munson decoy inside. Ball three. McRae not even bothering to take a look at Chuck Hiller because you know he's got the green light on three and one. 
George Fred is the on deck batter. There he is. Big pitch, 3 1. The count. Boy, he's a long way from the plate. You'd think he'd get that outside corner, but he strides right into it. He's a tough man to pitch to. So they're going for it. Line foul out of play. So I would think for a guy who stands as far from the plate as McCray, it's going to be very important that he does not swing at the bad pitch inside. He's striding in so, and sometimes you have a tendency to swing at bad balls inside. And he lays off the pitch very well. He likes to extend those arms and reach out over the plate. He doesn't do big thing too, Tony. He doesn't try to pull the outside pitch. He goes with it. Gets it to the opposite field. Here we go again. Three and two, two out. No, no, says Marty Spencer. It's a base on ball. Here comes Billy Martin. got the left hand hitting Brett coming up right now in a first and third situation. Because it is just... Marky Lyle should be ready and Billy Martin's already given the sign to go to his ace out of the pen. Billy Martin's going to make a pitching change. George Brett is the batter. Brett bounced out third to first and then tripled to drive in a run in the third. Tie run is on a third in the personal Frank White. Because it is the same move, same situation. Phillies are down by one. Dodgers won yesterday to take the two to one lead. And it's Tommy John against Steve Carlton. But right here, it's George Brett against Sparky Lyle. There are two outs. The Yankees have had difficulty, as we told you, winning in this ballpark. They won the first game this year. Since then, they've lost five straight. Off the end of the bat, and it's strike one. George Brett wasn't waiting for anything. White. Heads back to third. McRae is on at first. Lyle's third appearance in his championship series. This is two and two thirds inning up to this point. Without him and Kidry, the Yankees wouldn't be here off their regular season showing. Missed outside. Ball one. One ball, one strike. The on deck batter is Cowens. Man, that spark he wants to get is right here, George Brett. High ball two. A tough spot for Sparky, obviously, but ordinarily he is not used to coming in this early in the ball game. He's got a long stretch ahead of him, even though he does get out of this situation. He's used basically seventh, eighth, and ninth. The score is tied or one run lead. makes the play. Ball was well hit, but right at him. So that ends the inning, but two runs for Kansas City at the end of four. Yep. Last to the fifth, Sparky Lyle will face the cleanup hitter Al Collins, and then Wathen, who replaced Mayberry. Mayberry took ill, as we mentioned. And then it'll be Daryl Porter. One strike to Collins. Lyle, during the regular season, among the lead leaders in earned run average, the 2.170 RA, the slider jams Collins, out to Randolph, shielding his eyes from the sun, one out. Sparky with a 13-win, five-loss record in 72 appearances for the Yankees, but he had 26 saves, second to Bill Campbell of the Red Sox. Now it'll be John Wathen to face Lyle. Wathen with two previous at-bats. No hits so far in the championship series. Ellie Howard getting the sign from Gene Michaels upstairs, the walkie-talkie communication system. Move the outfielder. Wathen drives Mickey Rivers back, but it's his second out. Mick the Quick. Whitey Herzog is a great admirer of the center fielder for the Yankees, Mickey Rivers, he said he'd like to have him any day. He tried to make trades for him in the last couple of years. He's a good outfielder. He can cover a lot of ground. They criticize his throwing arm. 
One strike to Porter with two down. Last of the fifth, the Yankees lead five to four. The bread and butter pitch from Sparky Lyle is the hard slider. He tries to keep it down in the strike zone, but even when he gets it up, as he just did, it is so hard that he can get away with it at times. He's way ahead of Darrell Porter. He's really hit these Yankee pitching staff. One and two. Chambliss hit well, but Lyle has a three-up, three-down inning. Amos Otis, the all-time Royals champ and leader in hits, runs, doubles, and RBIs. He'll face Sparky Lyle, the third Yankee pitcher. Figueroa started, Tidrell came on. One strike. Just saw uh, a moment ago, Mike Torres go down to the bullpen. He started yesterday. Apparently, he's told Billy Martin that he can get loosened up enough if he needs him to give him an inning or two, or maybe just a hitter in a key situation. Royals hitters continue to take a lot of time getting their thoughts together in the batter's box. Two strikes and notice. Bella once known for his defensive prowess. Otis. And deep to left center field on the line, but Rivers over in time to get it. The sun is pretty severe in left field right now, Lupinello in this case. Directly in his eyes, it'll be tough. This hit by Pontek once again. He is three for three in this ball game. And they don't stop running. They round that back. In any misplay, they keep on going. Patek with 53 stolen bases as we look at Hiller for the 2 0 count. Purdy has not yet gotten that one foot on the artificial surface. He's still in the dirt part. He's gone. Fly ball center field. Patek will have to retreat. Rivers will get it. Glasses down, two up. So Freddie was going, but the ball was popped up. Tom Poquette was the scheduled hitter, but now it is Joe Zepp. There are two outs. Zepp, fly ball, right center field. Reggie Jackson should have it for the third out. He does. So the Royals are scoreless again. The Yankees still lead five to four. Paul Blair has gone in to replace Reggie Jackson. Paul Blair. Al McRae, George Brett, Al the Collins for Kansas City. Al in the eighth inning for New York, it'll be Johnson, Shambliss, and Randolph. As he pointed to the glasses, Panella on that line drive, it's directly over his head. One of the toughest plays for any outfielder battle the wind, the sun, the warning track, the wall. He never gave up on it, I'll tell you that. He stuck with it. He came up with a fine play. He did a lot of things on that play. Brett up the middle. Randolph backhands at the throw will not be in time at the base hit. and praise. We told you he had knee surgery earlier, but he did. The knee buckled or gave when he came down. We don't know when, but he apparently did hurt him a little. 
five to four. Yankees are out in front where the bottom half of the seventh inning tie and run is on. Al Collins is the batter. Collins bounced out third to first in the first inning. He walked in the third. He popped in the second baseman. Elston Howard getting the signals from Gene Michaels as they move the defense. Line five, one hop, Meadows to Randolph. One over to first double play. Five, four, three. But they missed him at second base. Brett tried to take him out, Tony. He sure did. He's still lying out there. He came in with a slide, and then he went into the roadblock. Nettles really got rid of the ball. Once he had it on that hard smash, watch Randolph. He really hung tough and got rid of the ball. There goes Brett. Brett was shook and shaken up. Good heaven by Randolph. So at the end of seven, New York five, Kansas City four. At the 515. It's not so bad for a shortstop because it's all in front of you, but your back is turned when you're a second baseman. He's very vulnerable. He threw that ball about three quarters, too, to make Brett get down a little bit, but it didn't stop Brett from trying to take him out, which he did. Here is Cliff Johnson. Strike one. He was going for downtown. Johnson bounced out third to first in the second, popped to the second baseman and fly to right. He is 0 for 3. Kansas City bottom of the eighth. It'll be Watham, Porter, and Otis. Royals trail by a run. We're in the eighth. Five to four. Yankees. Moves him back. One ball, one strike. Pattern on Johnson, moving back, trying to hit the outside corner. Another fastball, didn't get it. Strike two, one ball and two strikes. A pitching duel between Marty Patton, relief for the Royals, Sparky Lyle in relief for the Yankees. Kansas City bullpen starts to stir. The right hander and the left hander are up. Two pitch. Look at his bat. And just barely got it. He caught it. Marty Springstead says, no, everything is safe. I don't know what happened. It must have just bounced up. Marty Patton wisely got out of the way. Let's see what happens. Hard slider by Patton. Johnson just trying to get his bat somehow on a good pitch. Oh, hit the dirt and then came back up. Porter acted it out pretty oh. well, I'll tell you. When that bat went flying through there, all eyes were on that bat. But Marty Springstead very alertly watched the ball, which is what an umpire does. He umpires the ball, not people. Uh, I think he might have popped the rosin bag with the bat, too. To bring it to do it out right now. That bat whirling out there, hit the rosin bag, and you can see it right behind the pitcher's mound off the dirt part. I saw the rosin that broke loose. <laughs> Another record for you, Alan. First time Rosenbach broken in championship series. Ties a record. One ball, two strikes. Moves him back, two and two. That's the way they try and pick John. We've seen it a lot in this series. He gets in that crouch and starts looking, breaking ball away. He's a pretty good guess hitter. They've got to keep him on it. It's not a knockdown, it's a brush back. The crowd really enjoyed that because they thought Marty was getting even for Johnson letting the bat fly through there. Two balls and two strikes. Nobody on, nobody out. We're in the eighth. Foul straight back. Yankees five, Kansas City four. Kansas City leads the series two games to one. Dodgers lead the Phillies two games to one. It'll be eight o'clock Eastern time. Steve Carlton against Tommy John. Dick Kenberg and Don Drysdale will be bringing the action. You ever seen Cliff Johnson have a bad swing? He may get fooled at times, but he still has a good swing, a hard swing. There it is, the hot water bottle. Who's holding that? Was that catfish? 2-2 Two -two pitch. Didn't mean to swing up the middle. White's going to have to hustle. Sits down. Johnson lakes it out. They would have had him except that Frank White slipped and fell. And Cliff Johnson gets himself an infield hit. One thing you can do on dirt is plant that foot and come to a sliding stop. You tried an artificial surface. He said he never had a bad swing. It was a check swing. He still got it by Patton. 
He tries to set that right foot, it just gives on him. Patton's uh, follow-through is what cost him on that play, Tony. <laughs> now Shambler's talking to Dick Hauser, and we've got a pitch runner going. Roy White is running for Cliff Johnson. Billy Martin leads by a run. He'll be trying to pick one up here. Shambliss struck out in the second inning, and then on an attempted suicide squeeze, popped the ball up into a double play. Jackson was doubled to third, and then Shambliss was out. Patek on a ground ball to Watham. Brett's looking for the butt at third. White is back. Just trying to see if they can get Chambliss to commit himself. White didn't have that big a lead. They want to see if Chambliss will tip something off. Mattel, number 17, Mingori, the left-hander. Bunnett. Foul. Strike one. Chambliss having a tough time trying to block the ball. Well, we saw Kansas City execute almost everything they tried last night so beautifully from Patek sacrifice with on first and second to Brett pulling the ball with on second base. And the Yankees defensively and at the plate when they've had the advanced base runners have not been as consistent at it. Here's Cisco. Galen Cisco. Well, Tony, I saw the... I get a magazine called Scholastic Coach. It goes to the high school coaches and college coaches and it said in there that if a man can catch a ball... In the strike zone, you should be able to bunt. I think you ought to be able to bunt some pitches out of the strike zone, especially down low. Up high is the one that's a tough one. Anything but down if, low. But if he can catch the ball, if you can pretend, and I thought that was really a simple way of putting it in a great way, if you can catch the ball in the strike zone, you should be able to bunt it. It's a good tip. Big meeting going on. Now Marty Springstead is going to have a roll call to break it up here. We're in the eighth inning. Yankees are out in front five to four. One strike count on Shambliss. You wonder if we went out there to say, hey, be careful of the switch. Don't take it for granted he's butting and just lay one in. He may tear you apart. White gets a lead at first. Outside. One ball and one strike. Oh, the breeze has been blowing very hard to right field. We've not had a home run. They had 56 home runs at home, Kansas City. 90 on the road. We haven't had a home run here in two games. White back easily. Well, is he going to go back to the butt now or let Champa swing away again? Sometimes it looks like an obvious bunt situation, but if you've got a guy up there who can't execute it... There goes White. White. Swung on. Roy White. Breaking. <laughs> Nettles is grounded out twice, and he's singled to right field, an RBI single. Patton very quick. Scoring position, which is really what Billy Martin wanted. He wanted the man move the base, and now it's Willie Randolph. Gentlemanly, the infielders are from Kansas City. First ball game, Freddie Patek picked Cliff Johnson up after he almost tore his legs off. White slid hard and Freddie picked up White. Randolph, he's had a good day. Takes it inside, ball one. He singled and scored in the second inning. Was safe on an air and came around to score in the fourth. He fly to center field, so he scored two runs. Five to four, New York. Eighth inning. Roy White at second base. One out. Start him again, says Marty Patton. You think they went to the switch with White down at second base, changed their pattern of signs, and Patton wasn't sure? Sure they did, but I don't know how necessary that was. Strike is called. It's a curveball. One ball and one strike. One out. Bottom of the eighth. It'll be Watham and Porter and Oders for the Royals. And they trail by a run. 
quite a smart base runner down at second base, and you can't give him too much ground in this situation. Frank White, the second baseman, knows it. He's jockeying back and forth. It's gone. Low, two balls and one strike. And you picked off that time, Cole. He sure did. White took a couple of little stutter steps as if he was going to go, and he picked me out. Five to four. Yankees lead. Outside. Three balls and a strike. This becomes a big pitch now. Randolph takes a good look at Hauser. Does Billy Martin turn him loose or does he make him take the pitch and force Patton to go to three and two? Got to be alive for a pickoff attempt right here. Frank White may try and get Patton out of the hole. I think Roy White off base. Strikes. The on deck batter is Bucky Dent. Roy White, a lead at second. Frank White, very busy, flashing signs. Look at him. If nothing else, that gets the opposition thinking. I don't care if you're infielder, outfielder, pitcher, catcher. You get him thinking too much, you end up with bad headaches and two runs behind. 3-2 pitch to Willie Randolph. Foul straight back. Billy Martin. He's got to have this game, just like the Phillies have to have their game tonight. You'll see it right here, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Son Billy Joe's here in the ballpark today, missing the football game. Three balls, two strikes. Popped up. Pop tech and white. Who's going to take charge? Frank White makes the play. There are two outs. Good shot of how infielders help each other out in a situation like this. With the sun and the wind, you come over and help out in case he loses it or the ball drifts on him. So there are two way, and Bucky Dent is a batter. Bucky doubled to drive in a run, later scored himself in the second inning, sacrificed Bunt in the fourth, and fouled to the catcher in the sixth. Yankees five, Kansas City four, top of the eighth, the bottom of the eighth, it'll be Waltham, Porter, and Otis for Kansas City. Marty Patton has done quite a job since he's come on. Kansas City team is a very alert team. We've seen that this entire series. Marty's allowed only one run. That was unearned. That was in the fourth inning. Outside, ball one. Outfield is shortened up for Bucky Dent. Roy White will really have to hustle on a base hit. He got some guns, especially in center field and in right field. Straight away center field. Otis is coming in. White's going out. Otis taking charge. Makes the play. Ends the inning. We're going to the bottom of the eighth. And it'll be Watham, Porter, and Otis to Kansas City. It's for yard five. Kansas City to the four. Two of the last three, Royals hitters have hit the ball very hard off Sparky Ryan. He pounds the any inning double play to Nettles. Nettles is really guarding the line down at third now. Protects against the double. John Walton. Right. Strike two, two quick strikes on Watham by Sparky Lyle. Left side of that infield really plays him to pull. Look at how far Dent is in the hole and Nettles guarding that third base line. 
they're going to bust that slider in or that sinker ball inside on him. They can pull the ball to the ground. Down the right field line, but out of play. Foul ball. Cover made. Strike two. Nobody on, nobody out. Bottom of the eighth. Yankees five. Kansas City four. What a difference, Joe, the way Otis and Mickey Rivers play center field. They're deaf. Otis plays a very deep center field. The theory that Herzog likes an artificial service to cut down the alleys. The extra base sits. Look at Rivers. He's about 20, 30 feet more shallow than Otis would play. Foul back. High curveball. Watham. Fouls it back. Marky Lyle, taking inventory, every pitch now, brother, a big one. It's out of play, nobody will get this one, and Watham is getting his cuts. Lyle came in back in the third, or relief really, Tidrow. He has not been accustomed in recent years going these kinds of stretches. He still looks out to be throwing the ball pretty well. Getting down this far, it's a whole season right now. Bouncy ball, Bucky get to his left. He's got it. One out. Watham is out. We'll pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. KGW TV, Channel 8, Portland. Daryl Porter is the batter. Porter bounced out to the second baseman in the second inning. Fly to center in the fourth and lined hard to Shambliss in the fifth. One out in the eighth. Don't forget tonight, 8 Eastern time. Phillies and the Dodgers. Don Drysdale to Kenberg. Low ball one. Ball two. Martin Lyle, his season as the Yankees look on. He needs five outs. Kansas City. Looking for the run. Popped up. Shambliss taking charge, waiting, and makes the play. There are two outs. Porter really tries to jack up on one. Two and all. Oh. He did 16 home runs during the year, but he got his pitch inside. Just didn't quite get around on it. Amos Otis in the ninth inning for the Yankees. It'll be the top of the lineup. Rivers, Nettles, and Munson. Sparky Lyle throws the baseball in. They want to take a look at it. The Kansas City Royals have won 104 games. 102 in the regular season, two in the playoffs. But unless they win 105, season is not a good one. Yankees trying to hold on. They are four outs away from tying it up and going to tomorrow where it'll be split arm against Gidry. Strike. Nobody on, two men out, Sparky Lyle. Sparky after every pitch. He is making his blueprint. Boy, those hitters take their time from Ross. May have chased a bad ball, but fouls it off to count remains at strike two. Sparky's throwing a couple of good sinkers to Otis. That ball really moved. Otis didn't like the way it moved. And the ball was thrown out. Sparky didn't like that baseball. See if he goes off the dirt surface. He will. He'll go to his mouth. 
And you go to your mouth right there and the rosin bag, you've got to be off the dirt surface. <laughs> He's playing a few games with Otis right now. After that last pitch that really sunk. Two strike pitch. Bucky Depp, big hop. There's the throw. In time. Three up, three down. The bottom of the ninth will be Patek White and Seth for Kansas City. We go to the top of the ninth. It is New York five, Kansas City four. We have a few things going on tomorrow, aren't we? Well, we sure do. Two I baseball think. games. If the way football it, games. The way it's going right now, Tony, we could have early football, baseball. Got some problems on the bench, it looks like. And baseball. Should the Phillies tie it? Well, we'll have baseball tomorrow. And one of the games, especially for the metropolitan New York area, those amazing Jets coming off a big win. Jets will be in New York against the Buffalo and OJ. Simpson and Merle Olsen will be there. It starts with uh, NFL 77 at 12.30. Be a big day. I tell you what you do. The best thing to do, put it on NBC and stay there, and you will have some kind of day. Here is Mickey Rivers. He fouls it right back here, Tony. Rivers has had a big day. He doubled in the first inning. He singled the drive in the run in the second inning. He bounced out to the shortstop, and then he singled in the sixth. So he is three for four. If he ever hits one to the left center field, he's going to run forever. Otis has swung around toward right. Zab down the left field line. That's inside the park home run territory with river speed, if he hits it there. Up the middle, Mickey Rivers has his fourth base hit. So the Yankees have their lead base runner on. They lead five to four. And Whitey Herzog is gonna make a pitching change. We looked at the bottom of the ninth for Kansas City. It'll be Patek and White who have really been doing the damage this afternoon. And Zeb, 69, got five. That's the most. Bob Robertson, Ron Say, Steve Garvey all have four. And now Mickey Rivers. Nettles swears around. He's gonna punt, punts it in the air, and nobody can get it. They just haven't been able to get down the ground, the Yankees. No, and I'll tell you, Tony, I started to say, you can't blame the catcher on that, because what you do is, if the fellow squares around the punt, you break towards the uh, fair territory. So your first step is to, to get that ball if it's fun and fair, and then you have to make an old turn and try to make a play on a pop fly like that. It's a very tough play. So I think catchers are getting more attempts in bunt situations than normal on artificial service, because everybody tries to deaden the ball so, they deaden it too much, and the ball stays on the dirt for us, and the catcher can go out and get it. Rivers draws a throw. He was only a half step off. I mean, Gorey just kind of lets him know that he knows he's there. One strike. Look out. That was behind him. All the way back to the screen, and so there's no need to bunt now. What kind of a pitch was that? And Gorey with one strike, I believe he just tried, he just overthrew one. He was looking so at Rivers, he overthrew it, trying to throw a high fastball. Look at Nettles, he's, I'm getting out of here. So that's a wild pitch, putting Mickey Rivers down at second base. Now the ground ball to the right side, really a big play. Nettles has two base hits. Herzog looking on. It's high. Then Gorey loses Nettles, that may be it. Right-hander throwing down the bullpen for Herzog. Latella was up before, we believe that's him again. Two balls and one strike. Five to four. The Yankees are out in front. Rivers at second. Deep to right field, Rivers is tagging up. Collins got a good arm, makes the play. Here comes Rivers, here's the throw. But backing off the play is Mingori, and Rivers stays at third. So Mickey Rivers is at third with one man out, and the batter is Thurman Munson. Herzog's going to pop out again, and he's probably going to bring the right-hander, and he's already made the sign. 
Two strikes, one out, five, four, Yankees, top of the ninth. Out of play. Months in a tough out with two strikes. Struck out just 55 times in over 600 plate appearances. Got those 100 RBIs, 300 batting average. Cooper's not able to take too big a lead with Burt pitching from the stretch. Any chopper in the infield, they'll have a shot at him if he decides to go, which he will. It'll be deep enough. Tagging up his Rivers. Otis will not even make an attempt. And Mickey Rivers scores on a sacrifice fly. And the Yankees pick up the insurance run to make it 6-4. to four. Munson is tough. The right fielder, Paul Blair. Rivers being congratulated by his teammates, Bucky Dent, Roy White, Billy Martin. Look at them. All of them. He's had a big day, hasn't he? He sure has. All Blair. All one. Two outs. A foul ball. Blair bailing out against Bird. This guy could be tough on the right-hand hitter. Way he comes side on. Blair standing in the shadow. Ball coming from out of the sun. Might be getting a little tough to see the ball. Wouldn't think it by months the way he hung tough with that pitch to center. No. Two balls and one strike. Bottom of the ninth for Kansas City as we look at Herzog and Hank Soar, the umpire who's there to monitor walkie-talkie. It'll be Patek, White, and Zeb, the schedule hitters. Ground ball up the middle and she sneaks through. Paul Blair has himself a base hit, a big turn. He can run. Well, Blair, first time a bat in this game, gets a base hit. The left fielder, Lou Pinello. Brings up Pinello, who bounced out to the shortstop in the first. He singled to drive in a run in the third. He doubled in the fifth and fly to center. Six to four, Yankees lead. They hold the lead. They tie the series at two apiece, and tomorrow it is it. The whole season comes down to the nine innings tomorrow. Last ball misses inside. One ball, no strikes. Two outs. Billy Martin may try to get Blair in scoring position. He draws a throw. Paul stole just three bases during the regular season, but he's got good speed. If he feels he can get a jump. Inside. Two balls and no strikes. Tomorrow, the scheduled pitchers, the Yankees hold on. Gibby for New York, Spinar for Kansas City. It's popped up, it's playable. Watham in foul territory. Makes the play that ends the inning. In the bottom of the ninth will be Poptech, White, and Zapp to score. 6 4, New York. End of the lineup, the eight and nine hitters to lead it off. But they have been tough, especially Freddie Poptech. He's had about as good a day offensively as anybody on this either team. With two extra base hits, a triple, a double, and a single. He's been a tough hitter. Lyle's gone a long way. Came in in the third, as we mentioned to you, so Billy Martin has two men going in his bullpen. Sparky has pitched well. He came on to get Brent. A line drive to left field, and it was one, two, three in the fifth. Base hit in the sixth, the base hit in the seventh, and one, two, three in the eighth. Hot tank. Got one of those base hits. He is three for three. A triple and scored in the third inning. A double and scored and drove in a run and a single in the sixth. Listen to the fans. Brad 
contract. Smallest man in the major leagues. Today has been the biggest man in the Kansas City lineup. Bottom of the ninth. Three toughest outs in baseball. Right. Around the batting game today, several of the players commented when they looked at the wind blowing so hard out the right field that there would be a lot of home runs today. We haven't seen any, but we've seen eight extra base hits. Full foul. It's two quick strikes on Patek, who is 7 for 12 in this Whoops. series. His most embarrassing moment on national television. Well, he was hustling. An aggressive mistake. An error of enthusiasm. It's not like Mr. Ricky. It's his line. Two-strike pitch. High fly ball. They'll get him this time. Paul Blair waiting. One out. So he gets Patek for the first time in the ballgame when he had to. Leading off the ninth with that two-run lead. And Frank White is the batter. White hit a sacrifice fly in the third. He doubled the drive in a run in the fourth and fly to center field. Nettles at third base has come in and he yelled all the way across the infield. The champ has watched the bunt. Ball one. He may take one pitch trying to get further ahead and get a base on ball smile. One and one to count. One ball, one strike, one out. Nobody on. 6-4, Yankees lead. Strike two. Him out, Sparky Lyle gets his first strikeout. Big pitch, he really reached back for the hard slider. Here is Joe Zeb. championship series. Got an old parade going, but Hersey sticking with him. Mark Lyle wanted to know where it was. We look at John Stevens, the umpire, Billy Martin, and Dick Hauser. Martin about, along with Sparky Isle, and push it to five games. Strike is called. Two balls and one strike. I'll tell you one thing. Sparky obviously wants this guy, but he's looking in the on-deck circle. He's going to let Zeb hit something that's a strike because McCray is standing there with bat in hand. Two balls and one strike. Two outs. Misses. Three balls and one strike. Sparky Lyle has not walked the man. I got to make him take. And this comes down to the toughest out of this ball game right here as Sparky tries to nail it down. Three balls. One strike, 64, bottom of the night, Yankees lead. Popped up, it is out of play, and it's a full count of three balls and two strikes. Sparky has struck out just once since coming into this ball game. He hasn't walked anybody. Joe Zeb, three balls, two strikes. Foul. The count remains at three and two. Tonight at eight o'clock Eastern Time, the Phillies and the Dodgers. Look at Billy Martin, boy. They are really bearing down. Mark Lyle playing games now, Tony. I gotta believe the Royals suspect that he might be doing something to baseball. He's got that good slider too and a sinker. This could be it. Lou Camilla calls for it, waiting for it, and makes the catch. 
the ball game is over. The Yankees win it six to four. So we will be back here tomorrow for the deciding game of this championship series. And look at those Yankees and Sparky Lyle. What a job he did, Tony. He sure did. He came out and went a long stretch, coming in with three and two thirds of an inning gone. Rivers did a good job with four hits at the tail end of that lineup. Randolph and Dan. Randolph with two base hits, two run scores, dead. The base hit and the run scored. And more aggressive baseball today, Joe. Yes, sir. Sparky Lyle, five and a third scoreless innings. He is a winner.